we are continuing with uh, design of general purpose industrial helical gear reduction unit and this is module 3 and part 1 of the design and lecture number is 15 uh, where we will make a first layout of the gear unit after gear design. Now, outline of this lecture is that pinion and gear nomenclature that we will learn a little bit. Uh, this is required for the drawing. Design problem and gear data and dimensions. Layout of a of center lines. I will show that how to give input in AutoCAD and uh, what is the output that is the drawing and layout of gears AutoCAD input and drawing, layout of intermediate shaft uh, this will be draft means it may be final uh, it will be finalized later after selecting gears etcetera and here also AutoCAD uh, how the AutoCAD is given that is also discussed. Now, the what the problem we have taken we are going to design a two stage helical gear box uh, which uh, looks like uh, this what is shown this is the plan view top open plan view of the gear box and Z1, Z2, Z3, Z4 are the teeth numbers. In first stage pinion teeth number is Z1 and gear is uh, mating gear e, teeth number is Z2 and thus in second stage pinion teeth number is Z3 and final output through the mating gears Z4 and the problem is uh, same as already considered and discussed as we are uh, solving and in this lecture all data remain same except the second stage reduction ratio which is reduced to 5.125 overall transmission ratio is now 24.42 instead of which was um, close to 40 39 point something which was there and in this case only we have changed the teeth number of Z4 we have uh, reduced the teeth number of output stage gear others remain same therefore uh, torque up to the intermediate shaft will remain same and the design of gear Z1, Z2 and Z3 will remain same and thereby Z4 module will remain same only the size will change. So, this problem we have taken for the drawing the region I shall explain when we will come to the drawing. Now, as such the nomenclature of gear which earlier shown the here it is a meeting gears is shown pinion and gear both are shown and line of action also shown with a pitch point and um, most of the dimension will require for the drawing. However, the base circle which is designated by R B R B E B P and R B G where P stands for pinion, G stands for gear, the base circle radius that actually will not be needed for the gear drawing. But uh, if we look very quickly to the dimensions root and redundant circle radii that will be required pitch circle radius that will be also required, tip circle will also be required, center distance 
definitely and the pressure angle is not required. Um, circular face pitch uh, as such will not be required for the drawing, but this is just to give an idea what are the dimensions of the gears. Now next, um, we have already designed the gear as I told that input torque remains same and first stage reduction remains same. So, second stage uh, um, torque, torque in the intermediate shaft that is that remains same and thereby the module of the that pinion, the dimensions of the pinion for the second stage input also remains same. And if you look into this, the what are the teeth number? The Z1 is 17, Z2 is 81, Z3 is 16 and Z4 is 82 which was 131 in the problem which we have solved. Now, Z1 means the input pinion and gear is the Z2 is the first stage uh, gear. Now, the tooth profile as mentioned it is 20 degree full depth involute uncorrected. Full depth means addendum factor will be 1. Now, module as we have calculated and uh, with uh, from uh, different considerations we have ultimately taken at first stage it will be 3 millimeter and second stage it will be 4 millimeter. Helix angle what we have taken that is 11 degree 28 minute 42 seconds cos of this will be 0.98 and for which we will get a the center distance some square value that I will discuss. Now, addendum height as told this is 1. So, addendum height of first stage tooth addendum height is 3 millimeter and second stage it is 4 millimeter and um, the addendum height is 1.25 that is 3.75 millimeter and 5 millimeter for the second stage. This means that tooth height at uh, first stage will be 6.75 millimeter and second stage it will be 9 millimeter that will uh, we have to enter into the drawing we have to show into the drawing. Now, uh, another point I forgot to mention that um, direction of helix angle input pinion is right hand. So, therefore, gear mating gear has to be left hand and also it is important the intermediate shaft the direction of helix angle for the adjacent pinion also to be same to reduce axial uh, reaction load that also come into the next phase of calculation. And uh, if that pinion is left hand second stage then definitely the gear will be right hand. Now, next we calculate the pitch circle diameter of the pinion input pinion which is 52.04 and um, for gear 247.96 second stage pinion is 65.306 and gear is 334.694 that is against the 82 number of teeth and as we have taken the cos value is equal to 0.98 cos value of helix angle 0.98 that becomes 17 plus 51 uh, sorry uh, 17 plus 81 divided by 0.98 which gives 100 that multiplied by 3 and divided by 2 gives 150 a, a value which is multiple of um, 10 millimeter which is preferred in uh, standard gearbox design. Now, it is not essential that we have to make that cost value is uh, such that it will be adjusted 
actually in actual case a gear tooth correction is given to make uh, the center distance multiple of 10 millimeter or 5 millimeter 10 milli multiple of 10 millimeter is very common. In this case we are getting the um, center distance 150 millimeter in first stage and second stage 200 millimeter. Then we have also shown calculated the addendum or tip circle diameter and also root circle diameter. Then face width, face width when we have calculated then after finalizing the module we have multiplied the width factor which is given by psi with the module calculated module what the value is um, we get that directly that width is directly given to the gear and pinion mating pinion is made 5 millimeter more usually 5 millimeter more the reason is that uh, due to misalignment axial misalignment always the contact active contact will remain what value we have taken. Now question is that why not why the pinion is made shorter and gear is not made wider. If we make the gear wider we, it will need much more material weight will increase that is why always the additional width is given to the pinion. Uh, similarly, the second stage pinion is uh, 68 millimeter whereas active width given to the gear is 63 millimeter what we have calculated. Now material as already mentioned CN19A for the pinion and EN18A for the gear and um, to give the appropriate uh, life, uh, wear life or the wear load capacity point of view we have kept the Brinell hardness number of pinion is 350 and for gear it is 300. Um, in both stage we have kept it and it can be mentioned that with this value we can cut the gear simply by hob cutting. Grinding is not essential, grinding is not essential with this hardness. So, perhaps for that only we had to increase the module a little bit in the first stage it's itself and then as well as in second stage also. If we increase with the same material, same teeth number, if we increase the hardness probably we can go for a lower size that means module can be taken 2.5 in the first stage like that. Anyway, we have already uh, decided something and we are going we are going with that. Now this with this data which was the end of step 2 already mentioned. Now the uh, first layout of pinions and gear in mesh is done that is the step 3 and rough shape to the shaft are given. So that will be shown. Now uh, drawing such drawing can be done in drawing sheet there is no problem one can measure on the scale and start drawing. However, nowadays almost everywhere AutoCAD or similar powerful software is used for engineering drawing and uh, advantage of this using this that uh, um, there are many modules say for example bearings that is already drawn and many sub assemblies also um, kept as a subroutine that directly can be imported into the AutoCAD and uh, the drawing can be completed. Apart from that advantage is that any time we can alter the drawing we can simply delete one line we can add one line. However, it needs a practice. Um, unfortunately, there is no scope that I can teach the AutoCAD and neither I am an expert in that field. However, uh, with a little knowledge of the AutoCAD you can still develop uh, how the drawing. Now uh, first of all uh, this is the if you open the AutoCAD it is AutoDesk AutoCAD 2016 that version is there. 
So, if you open this one you will find that top there are many many menus and also bottom there is a place where uh, the data input will appear. Now, uh, first of all the gear data what will be required for this drawing we are going to make a plan view of the drawing. So, we need what is the helix angle, direction of helix, addendum height, addendum height, pitch circle diameter, center distance etcetera etcetera. That the table already gear data table which is shown that is uh, only essential data are shown here. Okay. Now, if we look into the top of that you can see that here the menu this a line is there a polynomial curve is there you can draw a arc circle you have to click there and there is some it will ask for some data that you have to give as an input. There are uh, many possibilities for example, if you would like to draw a circle it is possible that you have to give a center and radius or center and three points on the circle. So, that option you, you know which one will be better for you and you can give such inputs and you can get the circle. Similarly, the if you would like to write something the text is there and um, there is also that you can enter the dimensions say this is for linear dimensions here say this is you can click on uh, linear dimension for circle uh, that you have to click here and uh, then uh, different fillet uh, trimming you can rotate the view at some place you can uh, take the mirror image of the view and um, complete the other part if it is a it has a symmetry about an axis and there are many many options which you have to learn of your own. Now, the a typical menu for a line will be that that you have to first of all you have to draw a line and then if suppo suppose if you would like to draw at a distance then you have to give where you have how much displacement is required and there you can draw a line. In this case what we have shown that is the centered um, some distance it was given this is just uh, to show you that how the menu are given. And, um, next uh, the this you will get a line you will get a line like this and uh, this this is the um, output sap axis line now before that obviously you should know what should be the length of the central line that is you have to um, i always suggests better we should think of any intermediate sap add the width of pinion and gear which he, which will be assembled on the intermediate shaft. Between the pinion and gear there will be 10 millimeter gap and by the side of gear and pinion there will be another 20 25 millimeter gap and then bearing width will be 25 millimeter or so each side. So, if you add them then you will you will get that what should be the length of this. Uh, center line. So, first central line is drawn here and in the same way we can draw the three central line this is this lines are drawn on the basis of earlier problems. So, center distance is uh, shown here 300, but in, in this what we are now going to design for which our center distance will be 200 this will be 200 that means after drawing this first line then second line will be drawn at 300 which is simply the same size only distance will be 300 millimeter and then from there uh, another 150 millimeter which is the first input line center line for the input. And one point I would like to mention here if the dimensions are not mentioned um, then it is millimeter otherwise it will be mentioned. Okay. Now, 
we will first after drawing the center line then we will first draw the intermediate shaft gear and pinion. What the calculation we have done so far from there we can draw the center lines only and the envelope of the gears and pinion and their dimensions pitch circle etcetera. That is essential to determine the size of intermediate shaft position of the bearings. Once that is decided from there we can then input we can complete then input shaft and as well as output shaft. Now, in this in the development of this um, second stage pinion what we have done we have first of all we have considered that where is the pitch line this is half of the pitch circle diameter. So, in the intermediate shaft this is 65.306 pitch circle diameter of the pinion we have taken half of that and we have drawn a line giving a space for in on the, um, the center lines we have kept a space for bearing etcetera. After that we have say first we have drawn this uh, center line and then we will draw this envelope. And as shown that is the half of the dedendum circle and this is the half of the addendum circle of the pinion it is drawn and then we have we have drawn this line form and this is dot dotted because there is a, this pinion is not sectioned there and we have given the face width which is 68 millimeter. So, we have drawn this line as well as we have given a corner chamfer. At this stage either you can finalize the chamfer or this is usually recommended apparently here we have given 2 into 45 degree chamfer. That chamfer again it is available in the menu hmm. or you can set that one you can if you click there on two lines automatically this chamfer will come there. Okay. And after that what we are going to do we are making the mirror image of this one to other side to complete this pinion. So, pinion d, um, of the second stage input pinion is completed and here the you can see this this comment will be asked and you have to press one after another. Now, while you are delay, uh, selecting a distance for a uh, line then uh, you have to give input point output point and those who are habituated with uh, such drawing simply they can give some line and uh, that, that can be adjusted to that dimension close to that it is not essential that you have to put exact dimension on that and uh, neither it is possible. Suppose 69 say dimension 65.306 you cannot give. So, keep it fixed 65 or 65.5 something will come over there. Later while we are uh, dimensioning there a option is there that dimension can be modified to the exact value what we need. Okay. So, this is done. So, what we have done so far we have drawn three central line and we have completed only the second stage pinion on the intermediate shaft. Now, <coughs> a, if, if we show at a um, single slides then you can see that first this three central lines is drawn. The, the this box which is rectangular box which is shown here that is uh, given just for the space selections. Suppose you are uh, using a drawing sheet and let us consider you are using third angle projections. So, in that case this you have to select uh, the place where your plan view will come. Now, plan view for usually that is made left hand top corner. Now, how much space is required? Normally, the what the length we have taken for the center line length of the center line take another 50 millimeter out of that 
another 50 millimeter below. So, this means that here perhaps this is the central line we already you have calculated, then we can take here 50 millimeter okay, and this side also around 50 millimeter. And for this side we calculate the this is the radius of output gear. plus say another 100 millimeter. Similarly, this side also you can add with the radius of the pinion and input pinion and then 100 millimeter. In that way, we get the a rectangular shape that we space that select for the drawing of the plan view. In case of AutoCAD, we need not do it any time anywhere we can draw and copy and then we can put the in a final drawing set if that company is having such drawing set. Otherwise, the wherever it is drawn that you can directly take a print out of that. Anyway, say this is this boundary line is uh, given for uh, to select the space. So, after drawing these three line what we do we first do uh, draw the pitch lines of the pinion okay that what i have shown earlier in the autocad drawing and then we draw this boundary lines you can see this this uh, two lines for the width this is for um, addendum circle diameter and but where the pinion is meeting with the gear we have taken this line dotted initially even if, if you do not take it dotted you can make it dotted provided uh, that line is invisible that you can do it. So, that really does not matter, but we have we know that this will be invisible this portion that is why we have taken a dotted line there. So, we have drawn the boundary lines envelope lines of the pinion and then we have um, we have taken the addendum uh, the addendum circles and here uh, we have it is called scrap view that is just to show the contact portion of the teeth with the gear and also this corners are finished, these corners are finished with chamfer. At initial stage, at this stage it is not required, when we finalize the, the drawing we can do it, however, here it is done. So, this is roughly how the pinion is drawn, first it is drawn. Okay. Next what we do, we draw the gears, in the same way we I have shown, we draw the gears and as uh, importantly this distance from from the face of the pinion to face of the gear uh, we have kept here 10 millimeter at least 5 millimeter space should be there they should not be very close because in that case the um, the rotating pinion or gear or other shaft will rub on the surface may rub. So, that is why this gap is essential moreover a step is required there also. Now, next this is the input stage gear the dimensions and we have given here, here uh, it is not 300 later we will show that this will be 200 as we have taken 200 millimeter there. Anyway, this intermediate shaft pinion and gear that only we will draw in that stage and uh, in a slides we are not showing the envelope of the space envelope we are just showing the how to how this gear has been drawn first central lines then gap and then the envelope we have drawn and then the uh, root diameter also we have shown and 
second stage gear which is key to the output shaft that envelope is also drawn and finally, input pinion is drawn in the same fashion. Here also a scrap view is shown to see this engagement. Looking into this view, if you look then uh, the pinion is below the gear teeth, here also pinion is uh, below the gear teeth. Okay. Here uh, we have made it a firm line because we can add a scrap view there, here perhaps it will not be done or if required any of this line can be made firm line later only we can change it. So, at this stage what we have done, we have completed the gears. Now, shaft is not yet designed, gears are designed that we have put it there. Now, we will try to give a shape of these all the shafts, but first we will consider the intermediate shaft. Now, uh, before that what is their direction of helix, it can be mentioned by like this. The roughly we can take the say this is angle is 11.28, 11.5 degree or even 12 degree, draw the central lines and two lines that indicates the direction of helix. This is right hand, so we have to be we have to be careful about showing that which is right hand, which is left hand. So, this is right hand, this is left hand and as this is left hand, then here it is also left hand pinion on input pinion of second stage it will be left hand and here uh, the on the gear it will be right hand. So, will of the intermediate shaft. If we look the um, root circle or the adenum circle of the second stage pinion, the dimensions are 55.306. So, we can make the diameter just after this pinion, this pinion is integral with the shaft which I have mentioned earlier. So, we can probably take a dimensions of 54 millimeter okay, because after that further step down will be required to accommodate this gear to assemble this gears, but that will not be shown now. So, here we take 54 and definitely here dimension will be less. Therefore, while we are finalizing the shaft end for bearing seating and the space between the bearing and the gear, we will make it like this. What we have taken? This we have taken totally 35 millimeter and here it is 25 millimeter. This means that bearing width we are considering it will be close to 25 millimeter. Uh, sorry, uh, yeah, width of that will be close to 25 millimeter and after that 10 millimeter and it is expected that within this 10 millimeter we, we, will, be, we will be able to finish the inside wall of the housing. So, that means maybe for inside wall we will go further 5 millimeter and from this gear surface there will be at least 5, 6 millimeter gap. With that expectation we have considered this. However, it can be adjusted this way or that way later and that may not require due to that it may not require that we will recalculate the bearing supports, bending moment diagram of the shafts etcetera may not require. So, this at initial stage we will take uh, this uh, dimensions and if you look into this diameter here it was 54 and then the bearing um, shaft where the bearing will sit we have taken that diameter is 45 and after that we have taken 47. Uh, this is uh, I would say that uh, it might be a problem that we have to put a spacer here to support the inner rest of the bearing that we will see later hmm, what can be done. So, this space we have roughly taken and similarly we uh, consider the other side of the if you can see this these are the dimensions on the other sides. Here it was 54, so other side also we have kept, kept 54 
whereas this side we have kept 47 and once this is done then what we consider as it the somewhere about 12 millimeter from this side there will be uh, the bearing center bearing center may not be bearing width may not be 25 uh, it may be less so 12 millimeter from this side that means about 22 and in that way this adjusting this way or that way we have considered this is the center of bearing on the pinion side and this is the center of the bearing center means along the width half of the width of the bearing that will be here. So, we may consider the this is the point where the this is the point where the load will act on the bearing. So, these two points and from there the mid of the pinion is 53 millimeter and this side mid of the gear is 50 millimeter and totally it becomes 178. Okay. So, totally this length, length has become, become 178 and then And then finally, we uh, from there we can take a we can consider these gears we have it is of course, drawn in the reverse side. So, these are the dimensions for the next step calculation that means, now we can calculate what will be the load coming on the bearings and on the shafts. So, after drawing uh, uh, this portion, what we can do? We can finalize the design of intermediate shaft, we can select the bearing that can be done. In, in this design, we shall consider or be, be all bearing center will remain same, all bearing center will remain same. So, this means that length of the bearing support will remain 178 or at the most 180. So, this is the bearings and um, not tapered bearing in this case, this is typically 10 to 15 millimeter what we have considered 10 millimeter and this portion is 25 millimeter or so what we have also considered in between that some value and it has the final dimensions from that drawing we what we have got it is clear. But still I would say that we do not know what will is the exact width of the bearing only after finding out the load selecting the bearing we will be able to know what will be the exact dimensions of the bearing. But after this stage we have to complete other calculations before finalizing the other drawings. So, thank you. So, in this lecture or this is the end of this module I would like to say that what we have done we have finalized the gear design we have uh, made a preliminary layout where we have drawn the gear center lines and from there we have uh, um, taken a first initial size of the shafts of the intermediate shafts and uh, particularly we have located where can be bearings can be placed and now we are able to calculate that what are the load comings on the uh, bearings and from there probably we will be able to calculate the uh, load uh, loads moment etcetera acting on the shaft intermediate shafts. And if we consider that the uh, distance between bearing will same for input and output shaft from there also we will be able to estimate the um, size of the um, other shafts or at least we will be able to calculate what will be the load there and probably we will be able to finalize the bearings. Okay. So, next part uh, of bearing selection etcetera will be uh, taught in the module 4.